Hello. In this video, we will see how to, uh, we will basically learn, I and I will walk you through how to get QBox Pro running on your computer. Um, first of all, your computer has to be XP or older. It will not work on Windows 7. So, I've already got QBox Pro installed on here, but some of you people out there who in, uh, download QBox Pro might find a strange problem where it will not run. So I'm going to go to my computer and show you what I found out. I found this out somewhere on the internet. I didn't figure it out myself. I found it on the internet. So, but. And find where we where I have Q box. I think it's in the local disk C. Mm. Bear with the uh, slow frames per second here. We're running this on a rather slow computer. In the uh, C drive, we have a Q box folder, and this is all the stuff that clap is me wanting to kill a bug, but we got the stuff that comes with Q box Pro, except this clock stuff here. Is all from me. It has that doesn't come with it. But you notice amongst the stuff in the QBox Pro folder, including QBoxPro.exe, the actual program, you'll see QBoxPro.ini, which is a configuration settings. Make a copy of this particular folder, QBoxPro.ini, and go to your all caps Windows folder. Let's see if it's if it, if, I, if I can find it in here. And there it is, QBoxPro.ini. When I uh, had downloaded QBox Pro in the past, it wouldn't seem to work for me. And I didn't know what was going on. It would kind of start up, but it said like nothing. I don't remember exactly what it said, but it basically it wouldn't work. It had something to do with the help information not being there. So I don't remember. But the thing is, is I found out that I had to put this QBoxPro.ini folder into the Windows folder because it was expecting it there. And after I did that, it worked just fine. Now let's open this. I don't know if it will default to Notepad or not. It does. We open this up in Notepad and there's something we want to change. Now this video, of course, is for using uh, the Texas Instruments uh, TMS5220 uh, speech synthesizer chip. If you want to uh, put this, basically what I'm showing in this video is, I'm, uh, is if you want to put a linear predictive coding speech onto an EEPROM and then play it through a Texas Instruments TMS5220. LPCNB, set that to 10. The default is 12. Set it to 10. Also, the default maximum recording time or maximum file size is 30 seconds. I found that if I set this max sig buffer size to something bigger, it seems like it works. So let's set it well, at least a little bit. I think the maximum would be 37 seconds. So, actually, I don't necessarily want to save the changes just in case I messed up. But I think you would set that up higher. But you don't have to worry about that. Mainly thing is make sure this folder is in the Windows, that, that this file is in the Windows folder and um, make sure the LPC NB is set to 10. Once that's all good and ready, we'll be running QBox Pro. 
Now this is an ancient program from the early 90s or mid 90s or something like that. It's from the 90s and um, anyway there's some info on the internet and there's another video showing Qbox Pro but I decided I want to make make one too that will kind of guide you through some of the things here. So say you want to make a new project. Um, I'll just save it here uh, I'll save it in the Sample Pro folder. It doesn't matter where you save it at. I'm going to call it a, a test. Now here's the deal. You want to set your sampling rate to 8 kilohertz. The main thing is, is you want to have your coding table set to the 5220 for the Texas Instruments TMS5220 chip and this thing is being as laggy, there we go and make sure the alignment is set to byte now we can record a uh, recording to put on here so I'm going to open up one of my favorite programs of all time Audacity freaking love this program. Sampling rate is 8 kilohertz. You can also use sound recorder but keep in mind you, your sampling rate has to be 8 kilohertz and your bits have to be 16 bit. And I already set the defaults on, on uh, Odyssey to be that. You can also use sound recorder and go to convert now after going to properties. Okay. I'm going to make a new recording. This is a recording for the joys of linear predictive coding. This is being mastered on Audacity. It is May 24th, 2015. This audio will be synthesized and the synthesized audio will be sent to an EEPROM or erasable programmable read only memory. Now let's take anything past 30 seconds. Let's take out a little uh, bit there. A little bit there. Now let's test the playback. I have to take out this bit at the beginning too. This is a recording for the joys of linear predictive coding. This is being mastered on Audacity. It is May 24th, 2015. This audio will be synthesized and the synthesized audio will be sent to an EEPROM or erasable programmable read only memory. Now let us save our audio file here. Now, let's go back to QBox. Project Add Files. We gotta go to where that thing is. And a test. Now, we've got the file loaded into QBox. Let's go to process medium bit rate. Notice that the number of LPC coefficient or linear predictive coding coefficients is 10. Earlier in the INI file, we set that what we it was already set to 10 for me, but if you first get Qbox Pro, the default is 12. So make sure that LPC NB is 10. 
and you can uh, leave all this other stuff alone because notice you can actually change that here but you can't these that's why I have to go into that file and it takes a pretty uh, good while not forever but it takes a minute or so to if it's like a 30 second long recording it takes about a minute or so to uh, actually uh, convert the wave file so just bear with me while this converts anyway so this of course um, I mean, obviously I haven't showed like officially downloading it and installing Qbox Pro but basically once you do that just make sure you've put the INI file into um, the Windows folder and Qbox itself in the C drive the, the Qbox folder goes in the C drive the INI file goes into uh, the Windows folder and set the INI LPC and B to 10 instead of 12 and when starting the project it's byte alignment 8 kilohertz sampling rate and coding table is 5220 for the TMS 5220 speech synthesizer chip and basically what I did in the program in, the, in a microcontroller to uh, you don't have to use very much from the microcontroller for playing back the speech but you'll be you'll, you'll need to monitor the ready line off the TMS 5220, which is active low, and you'll need to monitor. I mean, and, and you'll need to send signals to the right line, which is also active low. Before saying anything, you need to send a speech uh, a speak external command, which is a uh, 60 in hex. Although ultimately, it's anything that has the particular bits, um, the first bits. Okay, 16 hex is assuming all the don't cares are zero. Let's just say that. Anyway, you send a speak external command to the synthesizer, and then it will accept bytes coming in from an EEPROM. And, um, Basically, you give it a write. It takes a bytes in, or it takes a byte in, and when the ready line goes low again, you send it another byte. And when the ready line, you have to wait till the ready line goes low because different speech sounds take different amounts of time to complete. So the ready line tells it whenever it's ready for the next byte. So as long as you're monitoring the ready line and waiting until ready goes back low before sending out another byte, you're good. I probably didn't uh, describe it very well, but it goes to show my shortcomings. That is, I'm lazy as crap. Okay, so... Taking a good while. A long one, it's more than a minute. That's taking a long one. It's probably because I'm running the screen capture software, that's probably why it's taking longer. Everything's running slower with that thing on. So now you can see. This original sampling rate is 8 kilohertz. And uh, here's the length of the recording. Converted to linear predictive coding, the average bit rate, note average bit rate. It is not a consistent bit rate, it changes. Like I mentioned earlier, you have to wait for the ready, ready line to go back low before sending another byte into the synthesizer. Um, this is an average bit rate which is only uh, about 2,000 bits per second. That's bits per second, not kilobits per second, or not, not even bytes per second. That's bits per second. 
So now, not listen, edit, concatenations, insert, concatenation. Now you can name this anything you want. I'm just going to press a bunch of keys. Now we're going to insert a phrase and it's a file that is selected up there. You can change the pitch if you want. You can change its speed, but we're going to leave it how it is. Now it's not quite ready yet because notice it says zero bytes. You have to go to format, LPC 10V 4UV, 10 voiced for unvoiced. Don't flip the bytes or anything like that. Just choose this one here and you'll see it shows how many bytes are in the data file and then you save the project. Now we can uh, listen to an example of how the linear predictive coding sounds. Notice this is a 28 second long recording and it's only consuming about 7 kilobytes. Play phrase. This is a recording of a joyous, a linear, predictive coding. This is being mastered on Audacity. It is May 24th, 2015. This audio will be synthesized, and the synthesized audio will be sent to an or erasable, readable, readable memory. Okay, so it's nice that you can actually play it on the program itself. Now, you can actually, if you want, add more concatenations. You can add more files on here and more concatenations. But you must keep in mind that the maximum file size, the maximum binary file size for programming onto an EEPROM, that the QBOX will spit out is 32 kilobytes. So if you have a whole lot of speech you want to put onto a bigger chip, you'll have to concatenate two separate 32 kilobyte binary files. Now this one is only a simple 8 kilobytes, so it's not a big problem. Well, 7 kilobytes, but I'm going to put it on an 8 kilobyte EEPROM. So, now we can X this out if we want. Exit. Now let's uh, program an EEPROM. Doesn't matter what EEPROM programmer you use, obviously. But let's go into the EEPROM programming software. So I have an Advantech Lab Tool 48 XP upgraded unit which is the same as the Dataman 48XP. They're the exact same programmer. Um, so I'm going to grab an EEPROM, a fresh EEPROM, because I have a liking for EEPROMs. I know they're a little on the obsolete side, but I think they're just cool. So Obviously you're not even seeing this. Ow. EEPROM's loaded into the programmer and we will auto ID and it is this one here, 27C64A. Now we go to load. Everything's happening slowly because of the screen capture program. Holy crap. Oh, go away! Holy crap, now that's stupid. That dumb thing came up. Okay. Good night. Q box. Because I, I saved it. Sample Pro. 
Now we want to find a test.bind. There is a test.bind. And you can uh, see here the data we have here. It's all LPC data of the speech. And then there's blank, blank spots left over. I could even uh, describe what it is. So I'm going to do that. Some null characters in there. And describe it with some text. This is an example of a linear predictive coding message for the video. We'll program the EEPROM. Takes a little while. EEPROMs tend to program a little slowly. Especially if they're like fresh, like fully erased. Um, because you can't technically program an EEPROM that has, it is partially programmed, but there's still blank space left. You can uh, change more of the blank spaces, ones into zeros, without having to fully erase it first. But if you want to change any zeros to ones, you're going to have to put it under the UV light for 20 minutes. This isn't even coming through both channels, is it? Oh, it is coming through both channels. Awesome. Okay. We've programmed. We can read it just to show that it worked. And edit. And we can see there's the data. This is stuff I just put on there. It has read for the EEPROM. So, we've programmed our EEPROM. Now, let's get to some interesting things. We're back on the video bandwagon again. Now, we will be showing the LPC playing out of the device. Here is my illustrious computer. So now we move the EEPROM out of the programmer. Here is the EEPROM we've just programmed. Right here is the Texas, Texas Instruments TMS5220 speech synthesizer chip. Right here is a microcontroller. Later on I'll be making a more full demonstration of this entire project which actually is a talking clock. But for now, we're just going to show it playing back the linear predictive coded recording I recorded. Now let's listen to it play back. I'm never going to be howling. I was enjoying a linear predictive coding. This is being mastered on Audacity. It is May 24, 2015. This audio will be synthesized, and the synthesized audio will be sent to an EEPROM, or erasable, publicly, memory. For the joys of linear predictive outing, this is being mastered on Audacity. 
It is May 24, 2015. This audio will be synthesized, and the synthesized audio will be sent to an EPROM or erasable, erasable, read only memory. Well, that shows the linear predictive coding. Um, that was an action. Hope you enjoyed it. One more thing. It's due to the F either. If you go to the SFM file on QBox, the SFM file corresponding to the name, such as in my case, a test. Open it up on Notepad, you'll find phrase 01, and then you find the starting address in hex, and then the LPC data, and you go to the end, and it says the number of bytes in decimal. That's very useful for programming such as the talking clock where I have to have a starting address for each phrase and then the number of bytes for it to play. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was can be helpful to somebody. And hopefully I don't get tons of negative feedback saying, eh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, this video is crap. And if I do, that's life. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.